Hello everyone, today I'm working on this uh, Concor. It's an SW7 and it's uh, exported by Concor but made by Cado. So this should be an excellent runner. However, cosmetically it's seen better days. So we're going to work uh, mostly on that today, but uh, should be well worth working on because it's going to be a good runner. So it's missing all its handrails. I'm going to use uh, just some uh, baling wire. You can also use this stuff from the dollar store. Everything, uh, they both work great. For this project, I also have to break out my airbrush because we're going to be doing uh, a lot of touch-ups. This should be blue, the bell should be blue, the horn should be blue. Same as the little handrails that I have, I'm going to want to paint them blue. So I'm going to take the shell off and let's take a look at the drive. So as far as I can tell, the couplers are holding the shell in. I'm going to need a really, really small uh, screwdriver to get in there. That's okay, I've got that. So I'll remove these two screws and the couplers will come. And then there's a little box also. So these, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna convert it to uh, micro trains or not. So uh, I'm still working that out. However, I've got quite a bit of work to do just uh, doing some more handrails and they want to make sure I don't lose these just working out some more handrails well the the fuel tanks pretty easy to come out so let's see how hard it's gonna be to bring this out not too too hard it looks like just remove the couplers and we have a front and a rear light so let's fool around with that a little bit also i i heard something uh rocking around there so i want to be careful not to lose anything oh there you go it was missing the window here so i found it so that's good i want to make sure i don't lose any of these i have to take the windows out before i paint it that's for sure for sure but is there a spot to put that light? I want to figure that out before I go any further. So it's been messed with quite a bit. You can see somebody welded stuff here, especially here, this is pretty gross. But if it works, I won't change it. So that's going to be maybe our first test, to, our first step to test out the motor and see how that goes. So all this setup is, I have a power pack on the floor and I just bring the two wires to my table. That seems to run nice and smooth. Switch the polarity. See if the back one lights up. Yeah, somebody figured out directional lighting. Put two LEDs on it. Make sure that you can see that. So directional lighting. So very cool. So I'm going to clean and relubricate all this up. But I'll do it while my paint's drying. So my first priority is going to be uh, fixing the, the shell. I have a little baggy to keep all my parts. That's gonna save me from some trouble uh, down the road. Because these are small screw. End scale screw, you might call them. So there's a lot of work to be done on this. I don't have to remove the handrails because they're gone. I'm going to clean this up a little bit with a glue blotch here. So I'm going to take that off with my X-Acto knife. And there's a bunch of glue on the windows too. 
Oh, for sure, some of these been in here. For sure, for sure. And that's the horn. I guess it goes here usually, and they moved it around here. It's on there solid, I'm not uh, changing it. That's gonna be okay. If you're gentle enough, you can remove the cab uh, from the frame. That's gonna be helpful. Just try to get an idea for what I have to do. This was glued uh, pretty poorly. I don't know. I might just uh, go ahead and make new windows for this. Still haven't decided 100%, so I'm going to save these. But definitely uh, more work is to be done on this. They're pretty ugly. So, I, But I still have some time to decide, but uh, it's not looking good for them. Yeah. Yuck. And then here's the back one. I suppose if you had no choice, you had to make do, but I would prefer not to use that. All right. I'm going to clean up all these holes where my handrails go. And then I'll come back. If you don't have a jeweler's drill like that, you should get one. I use this a lot. So I have to redrill uh, all these holes. That's gonna take a while. I'm still busy drilling. I decided to drill these little pins out and to replace them. I'm gonna replace them with a little bit of wire and that will make a replacement uh, replacement hanger for my for my uh, handrails and I'll just set them in there with some crazy glue and when it's set I'll come back and I'll cut uh, whatever's too long with my my little uh, Colors. Then I start making my handrails. I bend them uh, with my pliers, and you can still uh, adjust them by hand till uh, till you're happy. There, that looks pretty good. Because I have to make my own holes for this, I want to be sure and measure it uh, precisely before I bend it but you can tell right away it's shaping up good so then I know I have to bend it around this location just like that and then I'll bend it in just double checking the height again to be 100% sure. Perfect. I'll just bend it in just like that. And then that tells me how high, actually, exactly where I need to make that hole. And it's worth taking your, your time a little bit to make it very precise. Now I find it maybe just a little bit too low, so I'm going to bend it again. So I use my little pliers to make it straight. And then I'll bend it just a little bit higher. And then check it again. And then when my height is good, I can go ahead and cut the extra. That's the first part of my handrail. And then that goes in there nice and straight. And uh, yet last night before I went to bed, I saw a guy make a excavator 
out of PVC pipes. Uh, that was super impressive. He did a lot of parts himself. And uh, I think I'm going to link that in the description. It's a little bit of a long video, but boy, that guy works hard and he's got a lot of patience. I like to have my videos done uh, once a week, but that for sure took more than one week. Now I cut the ends of these, uh, these pins here. So that's going to hold my handrail uh, solidly. A little bit of extra effort, but uh, that's going to help quite a bit. Now it holds it together nice and firm, so that was a win. Also, uh, my horn fell off. I put it in a little baggie for safekeeping, but it's gonna go right back to where it's supposed to. And I'm gonna leave it there while I'm painting so I can paint it blue. And I do the exact same thing uh, on the other side. Get yourself a picture of the uh, original engine so you can uh, mimic the handrail style. And there's a stanchion that goes um, between the, uh, the two handrails. The stanchions are very quick to make. So I just bend one tab, at, one tab in the bottom. It doesn't have to be very big. And then just to make sure everything's straight, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna tweak it just a bit. And then that lines are uh, right here, just like so. And then I'll glue that with some CA. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. While well, your CA dry, you, s you still have time to manipulate it so that everything looks nice and straight. And then you can take a toothpick to remove the excess. Although I keep a little excess, but uh, you can still remove some of the excess with a toothpick. I'll keep a little bit of the excess just to make it uh, make it look just a little bit better then in the cab there's a there's a big prong here that's sticking out i have no clue why that's there so i'm gonna take my dremel and grind it down and then when it's dry i'll just uh, come in with my cutters and snip it and then that's it I looked at the pictures of um, some of these concours when they were new and did, did not have that side um, handrail. They only had the, the front and the back one. But I looked at pictures of the original unit and uh, they had it. So then that's ready for painting. On the cab, I removed uh, the big prong there and I made these two handrails for the back. These, I, I did not glue them in yet because I'm gonna remove them to paint them white. I'm also going to um, drill a hole in the headlight so I can fit uh, this light in the back and there's plenty of wire for that so that is good news good news now i'm doing the uh, the front handrails so i'll start with one bend and i'll stick it in there and i'll make the second bend just like that nice and square and these uh, these i'll glue them in and I make an exact copy for the rear. And then they each get uh, three stanchions. And the stanchions is going to be just one bend. Just like that. So I have to make a bunch of these. So when that's dry, I just come in and cut the tops. There you 
go. That uh, looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same for the back. I ran into some trouble um, while I was drilling the light out. So I took a piece of straw and I put it there. Hopefully once everything's painted together, it won't bug me too much. So I put the cap back on because there's two handrails I want to make on the uh, on the sides. The original Concord it only had the front and the back. So I'm doing a little bit more detail and uh, that's okay. It's uh, since I've got all the tools ready, may as well do a good job. So there's two holes there that I pre-drilled for the little handrails. I'm gonna bend these right now. Yeah, we all mess up sometimes. Uh, my Dremel, it just had um, too, too many RPMs, I think. So instead of cutting through the plastic, it was melting it. So that happens to all of us. We all make uh, goofy mistakes like that. And then that's gonna go this way. And then another little bend. And then I'll measure out for where I put my hole. How does that look? Oh, it's a little bit uh, too long. So I'm gonna shorten that. Last weekend here in Quebec was absolutely gorgeous. Everybody took out their old cars and uh, everybody was out and about enjoying, uh, enjoying life. I was out with my girlfriend and we went to the restaurant, a nice little place. You know, people go all over the world for tourism, but sometimes I'll tell you, there's no place like home nice little local restaurant that is uh, just great just a great place to eat let's just see how that looks i'll check for the height as well so the height is perfect you have to bend it a little bit square has to be just a little bit square Oh, also I forgot to tell you, I put that cap back on so I can make sure that my bars were uh, uh, vertical. So I used the cab as a guide for verticalness. So yeah, so that's a good trick for you guys. And then I just have to make the final little bend. Right here. And then that should be good. Just like that, so I have to make the same uh, on the other side. So these will be uh, painted white, so I'm gonna remove them uh, while I'm painting. While we're on the subject of painting, I've not been using my uh, airbrush for quite a while. I really do prefer to use red oak cans, but the, uh, the blue that I have for Conrail comes uh, in a paint can, so um, I'm gonna have to clean up my airbrush. I'm gonna get the worst of it uh, with this old rag. It probably looks worse than it is, but since we're using paint, it is important that it's clean. Also, um, I put a little bit of oil on the moving parts, not a lot. In your airbrush, the most uh, sensitive part is that needle. So we disassemble that first. That whenever you have problems, any type of problems, usually it's related to the needle or the jet. So my needle really does need a little bit of cleaning. Yeah, be careful with that because uh, it's very sharp. 
so that could definitely injure somebody I have seen times where the tip of the needle was bent so you definitely want to be careful with that I cleaned it with some steel wool this here isn't really uh, major just clean it make it nice looking but uh, it just protects the end of the needle same here this just uh, clamps the needle down but we are going to do a lot of work on this i'm going to remove this valve here that can get stuck sometimes let's just see what type of shape it's in right now so this should never get paint on it it's just part of the air system yeah it feels very stuck actually no it's not too bad that is part of the air system and never gets paint but I am going to put a little bit of lubrication on there just because today it's a airbrush cleaning day so I'll just put one drop on there 100% this, uh, this oil it will get into your paint so be sure and run a lot of air through this before you start painting. So I just play with it until um, the oil, I work the oil in, in the, the airbrush like that. On the tail here, there's also parts that don't get any, uh, any paint on them. But I still want to get them out. So that is the spring that controls your um, your airbrush and then this little guy here it also comes out like that this pushes on that valve to let the air in so that too is going to get just half a drop of lubrication but i'm still going to do it just half a drop. That's way too much. I'll spread it out with this to the other side. And then I'll wipe it with my rag. My phone's doing a great job of focusing on the table. Yeah, I'll wipe this up with my rag. And that as they say is that and then there's another little part in there which is finicky so that just uh, pushes against this part and it makes the action for uh, opening the paint and then over here it's more sensitive parts will do that last i have to get this uh this cup out that's on there tight so that too i cleaned it with a little bit of water and some steel wool so that paint goes through that so anything you put in there oil whatever that gets uh put into your paint so i'm not putting nothing I'm just leaving it like that so in here this is why you remove the needle first because the needle it will stick out of here the needle will stick out of here and this is a very fragile part it's your jet so that you want to keep it away from uh, from bad stuff I have to clean this part first I loosened everything up so this is just a protector it protects the needle and the jet and the jet and the needle stick through here so you have to be very very careful with that and that is your little jet all right i'm going to clean this part and i'm lifting back together now that everything's clean i'm going to put it all back together So none of these things have to be on very tight, just have to be hand tight, you know. And then we'll redo 
this part. Yes. That goes. That goes that way. So this spring pushes up against it. That's going to help me to set it properly. Just to have it there. Because it rides up against that. And then this pin here, like so. Little brass part goes in its hole there. So now everything can work together now. And then I'll put the retainer for that little spring. That feels pretty good. And then finally you can put your needle back on. And then that has to be tight, but not super tight. And then this is just a protector for that needle. A case for it. Maybe I'm not fully in. Yeah, be careful not to prick your hand with the needle. It's very sharp. That looks all right. Here we go. And then just double check. Everything's working great. The valve, the little valve that lets air in. Check the action on that. So I've got all the action going and the little paint uh, receptacle. And then you can decide how much of an angle you want to give it. Maybe just a little bit of an angle. That would be good. Beautiful. Now we're ready to paint. There's still a little bit of dust on here from the years of sitting on the shelf. So I'm going to wash this with some uh, dishwashing detergent and my uh, toothbrush. I'm going to give it plenty of time to dry before I do anything else. Now, because I want to keep this printing and these uh, these numbers here, I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm going to do. So I'm going to tape it, but with a round shape. So this will allow me to keep the, uh, to blend the, the paint, to blend the paint very close where my lettering is but at the same time um, keep it uh, blended gently but still keep it and that is what I'm aiming for now I'm going to set up my airbrush and I'm gonna paint this well, let's pull this tape and let's take a look at the results. That worked out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And then at this point, I will uh, paint the safety rails.
just like so. I just have to wait for the paint to dry now. That looks real good with the shiny paint. I could just about run it like that. But uh, I want to make the windows before I do the doll coat. So I will remove this. That I will move the cab very gently. You just pull on the back side and then that helps you uh, release the front side. Just like that. And then I'm gonna make my windows. I use a leftover packaging like this. I'll just cut out the outside and I'll use the middle part for windows. So I always keep these around. Recycling materials is good for the planet. It's also free, so uh, I like that. So I'm gonna follow my outline and cut it up. Got my front windows and my back windows. Just go in like that. Like so. And then for the side windows, they don't have to be very fancy, but I'm gonna bend them so that they're tight in there and they hold everything together. See now, because my side windows are tight in there, I don't have to use any glue. So that's awesome. I can uh, just uh, take them out and give it a coat of dull coat and then I can work on the drive while that's drying. These two side ones, I didn't push them in, they have to stay removable so I can get my windows in there, but I'm going to dull coat everything at the same time. And these two front ones, that is quite a dramatic change. That is such a good feeling when everything lines up properly that I'm going to have a lot of fun running this. That is a good thing. While that's drying, let's uh, check out the, uh, the drive system. It actually looks to be in super, super good shape, but I am going to clean the wheels. I'm going to add just a little bit of lubrication, not a ton just to say that I did something. And it's just like any Kado engine, that uh, gearbox plate, you get it up on one side and then the other side pops back into place, which is good, but at the same time that can be uh, annoying sometimes. So the best thing to do is to use uh, two screwdrivers and then just uh, prevent it from settling back while you do the other side. And then we'll do the back one. Do the exact same thing. Just prevent it from popping back into place. Here we go. Now once you have the bottom played out, I'm actually looking uh, intently at this. It actually has a direction, which I did not know that. But this end here, at the end of the, uh, the coupler end, there's a little box at the end. So that's kind of neat. And then once you have that out, just these two tabs will release the uh, the side frames and then once you have the side frames off you can uh, see the electrical connector this little uh, bronze tab or copper tab that's your electrical connection everything looks really clean I'm still gonna remove them to clean them once you get this far that is the, the hard parts over. So you just spread out the two little copper plates. And that allows you to pick the, uh, the wheels off. 
It's that easy. And then to clean the wheels, I do it with my rag. Now this one's got a traction tire. So the traction tire, I'll be cleaning it the same, but just very gently. Just like so. And even the little uh, axle is good to clean it. So they're not terrible. I'm glad somebody had fun with this before. There's a little bit of wear marks, which that's okay. They're, they're meant to be run. And even though you can um, wear them so you go through the nickel silver plating and you get onto the brass, it still runs good. You just have to clean it more often. The nickel silver plating is a good uh, protector against corrosion. So that's that, that looks really good. Only got four more to go. And I'll clean the side frames uh, with my toothbrush. I don't put a lot of lubrication in these. Just a drop. You can see the, the motor shaft is accessible. So what I'll do, I'll just put a drop on it. And then I'll wiggle it around and I'll use gravity and capillarity to draw it into the motor. Sometimes I'll, I'll even run it. But this, I tested it before. It's actually very, very smooth. You know, more and more, even though I like working on Backman engines and I'll still buy them, Whenever I do a video that has the word Backman on it, it gets lots of views. And there's a little bearing right here. That one too, I give it a drop on both sides. And at the end here, I'll give it a drop there too. And then I'll just run it on the bench a little bit. Just to spread things around. But it's a super smooth runner on the bench. Super quiet. But of course the real test is uh, on the track. So let's go do that right now. It's a super smooth runner. No surprise there. So that's good. I'm going to put uh, the shell back on at this time. While we're on the subject of Conrail, I bought this caboose a while back. I never used it. So I'm going to put this together real quick. Do you guys have this in your collection? I find it very neat to have uh, the interior. There's where the, the cupola, where the people sit in the cupola. The little stove, it's had a connecting pipe and all the under uh, under the body uh, piping. Probably this will light up. I'm just waiting to see. There's a good chance it's looking good anyways. I only have uh, one coupler. That's going to be okay for today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want to run some trains. So I will put the, put it together quickly here. Oh, also the doors open up. That's also pretty neat. The doors open up and they have a little spring. I'm going to put this together quick here. Now the shell goes back on it. I'll make sure that I get my little light uh, exactly in there where it needs to go. Let me work on that for a second had to struggle with it a bit but it went in I have to struggle pretty good to get the uh, 
the coupler in there. The best method I found is first I put the coupler and the little uh, washer and then my screwdriver is magnetic so I get the little screw uh, on my screwdriver magnetically and then it's a good thing I have experience with N scale And then once I got it in magnetically, I'll bring in it. I'll bring it in to uh, to its spot. It is not easy. It uh, it wasn't easy to get it started, but uh, that's what they say, you know. Never give up. I decided to go with the original um, horn hook couplers. All my other stuff is horn hooks, uh, including the Proto 2000 caboose. So that's going to be good enough for today. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.